I welcome you all to this IBM webinar on network modernization through software defined networking. And I sincerely thank each one of you for taking time out from your busy schedule to participate in this webinar. Today we have our main speaker, Mr. Stephen Curry. Uh, Steve is an distinguished engineer at IBM. He has more than 25 years of experience in IT consulting. Currently, he is leading the qualification and adoption of software-defined networking technologies with IBM clients as a member of the GTS technology innovation and automation team. Over his career, he has delivered leading edge IT services and solutions to solve uh, pressing business issues for our clients. Steve also comes with a vast consulting experience around managed network infrastructure, mobility and enterprise wireless. Today, Steve will talk about some of the key industry trends which is driving the adoption of software-defined networking. Apart from sharing some of our key SDN success stories, IBM reference architecture on SDN, Steve will also touch upon a critical point on what uh, a customer should look for in an ideal SDN partner. Um, I, I'm sure there are a lot of uh, interesting insights uh, available for next 30 40 minutes so kindly stay tuned once again thanking all of you for joining us on this webinar i will now hand over to steve uh, over to you steve thank you kieran and welcome good afternoon as kieran mentioned what we're going to do in this webinar is talk about how sdn software defined networking can enable your organization to increase agility, security, and cost effectiveness within your environment. We're going to talk about this all in the context of hybrid cloud and IT as a service and how we can bring all these modern capabilities into your environment so that you can then take advantage of bringing new business services online quicker, bring those new services online in a secure fashion, and to do this in a very cost-effective manner. Now, what's interesting, <clears throat> in the last week or so, there's been another increase in awareness of the importance of security in our IT environments. And not that the network specifically could have solved the problems of this past week, but oftentimes if we use the tools we have available within the network, we can mitigate against many of these security threats. So we're going to add a little emphasis on how SDN can also improve your network security profile. So hybrid clouds today are a reality. We use hybrid clouds to deliver our IT services to our stakeholders. And first, what is an I, a hybrid cloud? Really, it's taking the best of what we do today in our on-premise environments and adding to that different cloud services, whether it is software as a service, perhaps it is some sort of hosting environment, or it's even down to uh, bare metal type services that I can use from a cloud provider and augment my IT infrastructure. And these hybrid cloud environments allow us to add capacity and capabilities to our existing IT environments without the capital expense that oftentimes we need to put into our IT environments to build out that new capability. So it gives me a fast and flexible way to add new capacity and capability to my environments in that I don't have to go out and buy and build and then I'm locked in for some period of time because I have my depreciation and I have to get the, the value out of that capital expend, expenditure, it is actually a 
a, a way that I can go out and procure those IT services, use them for as long as I need to, and then turn it off without having I've wasted a capital expense. So I can drive better value into my environment. I can do this in a very cost-effective manner because I'm optimizing where I'm putting my investments and my expenses. I can also increase some of my security and resiliency that in that I can put the crown jewels, if you will, the data that I use that makes my organization unique in the marketplace in a very secure on-prem environment, high performing, very resilient with all the backup and restoration capabilities that I need. But yet I can put those front end or application interfaces and those application services and expand and grow those into a cloud environment and contract them when I need depending on my own business cycles. For example, in a retail market, as I approach the busy season for when I get the most of my sales, perhaps it's a holiday season, I can increase my capacity on the cloud, serve my customers, and then as that peak sales cycle goes down, I can pull that back off the cloud, reduce my capacity, reduce my expense, yet I bring all that data back into my own environment and I can then process and protect that data. And I can do all this in, in a high quality fashion. I can push out these services and bring them back in as needed and I can then add automation to that so that I can do that very efficiently and drive an end-to-end -end service management model. This hybrid cloud environment then really drives a new way of presenting and managing my IT environment so that I can start viewing it more as a service where I have modular IT services out there in the industry or within my own environment that are different blocks that can be brought together and presented then to my stakeholders as a complete service that is perhaps customer facing, working with my partners, enabling my own organization and the workforce I have. And those modular building blocks come together and are then brokered and managed as that complete service. And all this then is built on a hybrid cloud platform that includes both the, the traditional on-prem and various cloud services. In doing all of this IT as a service on top of the cloud, I want to ensure that I have the analytics, the automation, and the management using cognitive perhaps technologies, using DevOps environments for uh, orchestration, provisioning, and automation. This IT as a service environment has some key characteristics that include self-service, so a portal that allows me to enable or turn up new services. Perhaps it is expanding a customer relationship management system, adding capacity to that as I approach those busy seasons. I can do this very quickly, driving those new services into the environment. And again, in a secure and uh, redundant fashion as needed, as it meets my own business cap uh, needs, and put the governance around it. I want to make sure that as I'm expanding con and contracting all these services that I do so with proper procurement governance so that the people expanding and contracting these services have operational guidelines that says you're only allowed to spend so much and once you hit that threshold you have to come back and ask for permission to spend more so it's not unending spending and we can have a fiduciary responsibility back to our organization and at the same time I can look to see what are the patterns of behavior where I need to expand and contract or add new 
or take away old services. So that visibility and governance to optimize my environment. <clears throat> well, as we look at this hybrid cloud environment, compute storage and network are still the underpinning elements of the environment. I still am processing applications and data. I still need to store that data and all of this needs to communicate with my employees, with my partners, and with my customers. Traditionally, my compute, especially with virtualization now that's been going on in the marketplace for 15, 20 years at, in the uh, uh, distributed systems and on the mainframes and mid-size systems, it's been going on for decades, right? We've had the ability to do agility in adding capacity quickly in scaling that out in virtualizing services on top so I can take advantage of being more efficient in the use of my compute resources and automating all that. And I've been able to do the similar types of tasks of quickly spinning up new storage to my end systems, again, with all within the capacity of my physical deployments and do that in an automated way. The network traditionally has been pretty slow about this. Now, we've always been virtualized to some extent. If I look at Frame Relay and, and MPLS services, they are virtualizing the wide area network physical environment. Or if I look at VLANs in the data center or the campus, again, that is a virtualization technique. But I have not had the ability to drive in automation in a very predictable and standardized way. You know, I could use screen scraping, scripting, and things like that, but not driving through APIs, through standard interfaces, where I could really make this these new uh, network services available at the same pace as my compute and storage. In talking with clients and in our own experience in managing many client infrastructures, there, because of process, because of the lack of automation, and just some of the complexity in the environment, in the network, we have seen days or weeks needed to spin up new services. In some extreme cases, clients have told me it takes me eight weeks just to get a new VLAN defined in my data center. Now, again, part of that is process and understanding how these new VLANs are affecting my availability characteristics of the, of the environment, uh, how it affects security in my environment. But the reality is that because of all this complexity and because of the lack of automation, it's taken these days, weeks, and sometimes even months for changes. So how can I do something different? Software-defined networking gives me now the ability to automate using APIs in a very standardized and structured way. It allows me to bring new levels of virtualization to the network, and those new levels of virtualization help me utilize the physical resources, whether it's my own capital investment or a cloud provider's infrastructure, it allows me to use these physical resources much more efficiently and gain greater utilization of that environment, all within a very secure environment. So I can increase my network security posture and bring greater capabilities to my network security. So software-defined networking is an answer, it is one answer that the marketplace has brought to, to enterprises <clears throat> and even within service providers. Now please don't uh, let me lead you down the path that says SDN is the way for everything and that it will fix all of your woes. It doesn't. If you have problems with a physical network that the network is unavailable, it is having problems all the time, 
I have outages of severe natures. Adding software-defined networking on top of that just means you're going to have problems with your SDN because it relies on the physical network. And we'll talk more about that later on. But what, what I'm trying to say is SDN brings new capabilities, but it doesn't fix everything. So we have to ensure that we use these tools to solve specific needs of my organization. So if I'm trying to bring greater agility into my business applications, which then requires greater agility of the IT services and the IT infrastructure, software-defined networking could be a great help. If I'm trying to improve my network security posture and I'm looking to do micro-segmentation in a very organized and centrally managed method, software-defined networking could be of great assistance. And if I'm trying to drive greater utilization of my physical investment, my physical environment, SDN could be a good, good tool to achieve that. So what is SDN? Uh, SDN right now in the marketplace is almost as bad as cloud or if you go back to the early 2000s, e-business. You know, we quickly put these labels in front of products so I can start selling things. <laughs> and <clears throat> so SDN, the way I'm talking about SDN right now is that SDN brings a software interface, a standard set of APIs so I can program and control the environment centrally. So that is the control plane that many of the vendors talk about. And when they talk about the control plane, it's really the management of the environment because those of us who have been in networking for a long time really understand that we have protocols that have control planes. I have spanning tree that has its own control plane. I have multicast with a control plane. I have my layer three environment with OSPF or BGP or EIGRP. They are control planes as well. So we're not talking about the protocol control plane when you hear vendors talking about a centralized control plane because we already had that. That's not really very new. What they're really talking about is having a centralized means of controlling and managing this environment. So most SDN platforms or products will include a controller. And this controller then has visibility of the topology, has a visibility of how the network is configured. So when I want to provision new services, I do so through the controller who now has visibility in the environment, has all the programming out to the endpoints of this network, and has the ability to do within structured controls changes to the environment so it can then preserve the availability of this network and spin up or make new services available. So a key Characteristic of SDN then is this centralized management and control of the environment, typically through a controller using software-based APIs or programmability that are also available to other systems that allow me to then orchestrate compute, storage, network, security, resiliency, all into one software-defined environment, all into one IT as a service environment. Another key characteristic is that I have network virtualization where <clears throat> I'm now moving the network understanding up a level. So it's not just within the physical switch or the physical router, but I can drive the network topology into the hypervisor, into the operating system by using things like V switches, open V switch, uh, virtualized routers, and driving the network up closer to the compute environment, closer to the storage environment. And by doing so, I now can drive 
network communications closer to the application instances, which then will lead me to greater security. A third key element. Now, this one is debatable. I think in the enterprise, we expect network function virtualization to be part of my SDN environment, especially in the data center. But if I go talk to a carrier or a telecommunications company, they do not see network function virtualization as part of SDN. And that is because they've already, as I mentioned in the beginning, they've already virtualized their physical environment with services like MPLS, prior to that even frame relay. And really what they're trying to do is drive in through network function virtualization greater capital efficiency by taking what were traditionally very large firewalls as an example and now making that smaller modular software that they could deploy on commodity Intel or x86 type platforms. So they keep it separate. But within the enterprise, most of the SDN products really start drawing in as part of the base product. If you look at VMware NSX as a good example, I have network virtualization, overlay networks, and then I can put in, and it then also includes, depending on the licensing level, a distributed firewall, a distributed load balancer. <clears throat> so we're talking about network function virtualization and within the enterprise, many of the products include network function virtualization. Now, what is network function virtualization? This is taking what was traditionally put down on dedicated hardware, uh, firewalls, load balancers, and moving that into a virtual machine or virtual appliance and deploying that into um, a, a, an x86 or some sort of structure, um, I'm sorry, commodity-based hardware platform. So it reduces my capital expense, but yet I have the scalability and growth um, potential within my um, key network functions. These network functions are also the means of how I can achieve greater security and improve my network security profile in my data centers. So by having something like a distributed firewall or these endpoint groups or, or similar services, Nokia Nuage and Juniper Contrail also offer similar types of capabilities. I'm now able to drive my firewall functions as close to the application services as possible. And now I can put perimeters around the actual instance of each application controlling not only north-south, meaning in and out of the data center communications to the end customer, but also east-west. So traditionally, we built these security zones where everything in a security zone, we said, is trusted, and they could all talk to each other. So every web server was put in one security zone. Well, what happened was if a web server was compromised, that then one web server could be used to jump to every other web server. Well, with using distributed firewall services, I can bring my firewall around in actual web services itself, a specific instance, and say, you know what? There's no, really no reason for a web server to talk to another web server. So don't allow it. Only allow this web server to talk to the associated application server or database server. So I can drive greater network security into the environment using uh, virtual network functions. So all this then allows us to bring network up to the same level of virtualization, automation, and efficiency as what we have with storage and compute. So what is key to help you take advantage of these SDN environments? Well, first, finding that you have to really take a look at what am I trying to accomplish in this environment with these tools? Because these are just tools to improve my agility, my security, my efficiency. So once I understand what I am trying to achieve as an organization, 
then you need to go find what is the best solution for you. And open source is an option, but you have to realize you're maintaining that open source. So when you're paying licensing fees, you're paying that third-party company to maintain its software, provide support. When we go down the open source path, if you have the capability of doing that yourself, that's one option. Or you could go look at uh, products in the marketplace like the, the four I've mentioned already. And there are others out there. And find the best solution. You would hope that your partner has a proven reference architecture that they have the experience to bring these tools to bear and help you achieve what you're needing to achieve to build your organization up, to meet your organizational objectives. You want to make sure that your partner has understands the cloud world and is a leader in that world um, and has the expertise around all these different piece parts, right? So storage and compute, not just network, because as we move into this software-defined world, all these different disciplines that used to be very tower-centric become more interrelated. And that also helps us drive greater agility into my services, helps me present IT as a service back to the business. So you need to have technological expertise that spans all these environments. Make sure that I have a good framework and one of the advantages of, of, of IBM and uh, other providers is that we have innovation centers. These innovation centers allow us to bring these technologies forward so that you can see and touch and, and experience them before we bring them into your enterprise. So when we're looking for a provider, you want to make sure that we're driving the solutions not from the product, but actually from your business requirements. Oftentimes when I talk to a client, they will start with whatever product, Cisco ACI, VMware NSX, Nuage, Contrail, whatever. And they're coming at it from what is the best product because they all have this strength or this weakness and blah, blah, blah. Well, I turn the conversation back and ask, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to improve agility across the entire environment? And that's because you have a high rate of change or you're expecting a high rate of change in your environment. Or do you have very static systems in your databases and your non-Intel systems, but your Intel environment where you're running a lot of these application front ends is where you're seeing a high rate of change. Oh, okay, well then let's look at products that might help you in that environment, right? I don't need to apply everything to a, 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 an SDN technology across my entire data center. I need to apply these tools where I'm gonna gain the greatest agility, the greatest efficiency, and the greatest security improvement. Right? Or perhaps I'm now a uh, involved in, in business with European entities and I'm concerned about the general data protection regulation and how I can improve and um, prove that I have security controls in place and perhaps virtualizing network functions might help me do that, right? So I'm coming at this from the business requirement, not necessarily what can this virtual firewall do for me. You want to make sure that there's the experience that the provider can work with all the leading um, product vendors out there and that we that they have an unbiased point of view that they will actually you have your best interests in mind and help you choose the right product regardless of who that provider is it's not because I have the strongest partner with a certain company, but it's because this really is the right solution for you. All right. And you have to make sure that they have a proven process. Within IBM, we have had a method that I'm one of the authors in 
instructors of uh, for the past 20 years. But IBM's had this around for 30 years, right, and even longer, um, where we have a very standardized and structured method of approaching solving the business problem with technology, not installing technology that we hope will solve your business problem. As an example, within IBM, we have defined and crafted a reference architecture for SDN. And it includes all the, the critical technical work products that you would expect, defining a, a system context diagram which says, hey, this is the scope of the system under design, and here's what it interacts with. Defining the architecture in a conceptual and functional and specified way. Um, you can see the, a sample of the use case model on the left of which we had 16 use cases. Not every use case applies to every client, right? We focus in on the ones that are needed for a client and either de-emphasize or remove those that are not needed. Maybe you don't need a multi-tenant network. So we drop that out. We don't worry about it. We take away the requirements that come with that, right? And so that we're only focused on the needs that you have. And we then, working with those requirements, start building decisions. We lay out where the components should reside in the environment, get into what we call specified or functional level design, and then we get into the physical design and what vendor-specific solutions. So you'll see that the, the, the product choice is at the end, not at the beginning. And we're working towards selecting the right product and deploying that. So this goes back to our consulting services, deployment services, and managed services. Uh, we Again, I mentioned our methods that have been around, time proven, rare, very robust, and our practitioners, the people out there working with our clients every day use these methods to get the job done in a very consistent and structured manner. Our deployment services can take working uh, using the expertise of our people, deploy these products using that experience, using the expertise, and partnering with, with the vendors to make sure it's done right for you. And we have the ability to manage these services ongoing or enabling your own uh, organizations to manage the environment. So, you, you know, once it's installed and works, you kind of want to keep it running. So we have the, uh, the services to help you manage this ongoing. Uh, network consulting, I'm going to go through these pretty quick so we can move to Q&A. Uh, this is where we have our, our structured process where we gather data, do the analysis planning, do the architecture, build technology roadmaps if that's needed, and help um, get the buy-in of the organization so that everyone agrees that this is really the right way to do it. And we have maturity models that can help us compare you to where you want to be and even bring in some of that industry experience of, you know, here's a, a way of measuring your maturity against different characteristics that are used in the marketplace. Our innovation centers allow us to test, integrate, and help you select the right technologies. It's a good way to see it, touch it, feel it, to see if these really are the, the right technologies for you. We have innovation centers in Nice, France, Dallas, Texas, and I think we also have, now have one in Singapore. <clears throat> and our deployment and design or design and deployment implementation services again follow a very structured method to make sure that we do this uh, in a consistent way and that we don't miss things. Now, this we apply these methods to both agile and traditional waterfall project management. So we can use our methods depending on how your organization wants to manage the project. So it's not saying that the that project has to be managed in a certain way. 
It's that these are the disciplines that we bring to bear, whether it is using agile techniques or traditional project management techniques. And we go through everything from making sure the bill of materials is right, to validating and testing it, to then handing it over to um, operations teams. I want to give you two quick examples just to show that this stuff is real. And you know, I've been doing that reference architecture I mentioned earlier is been evolving over the last four years. We're going to publish some uh, updates in the next week or two to our practitioners, to our people in the field. And we keep on improving it based upon our experiences. And we use it in all of our engagements. And in this one example of a global media company where we did SDN, SDN design, deploy, and management services, it was a large outsourcing agreement where the, the firm was growing rapidly. <clears throat> they had a mix of traditional infrastructure and some cloud services. Nothing uh, was tied together. What they needed to do is increase their agility, um, but maintain security between the operating entities. <clears throat> the overall solution included four GTS data centers and four Bluemix infrastructure, or net, what used to be known as SoftLayer infrastructure services, for their locations. And in this, for SDN, we use VMware NSX because they use, the, the um, client used a lot of VMware ESXi. In fact, it was all ESXi. So it was a natural fit. We use Cloud Orchestrator, which has OpenStack underneath to do the orchestration and provisioning. And we <clears throat> um, applied key features like um, uh, distributed firewall and network virtualization where we did overlay networks. We deployed NSX in the the traditional data centers as well as in software and we have all this interoperating together in one big base system that then each of the operating entities were virtually separated on top so we were able to drive efficiency in how we utilize the physical resources but yet maintain separation of the operating entities. We were able to uh, once we proved how we could do it the first time we were deploying new data centers, the entire networking for a new data center in less than two days. Actually, it was less than a day at the end. Um, <clears throat> could you imagine deploying all of your VLANs, all of your firewalls, all of your load balancers in less than two days? It was pretty amazing. Second example is in uh, an insurance and financial market. And this one, the infrastructure is nearing the end of life and end of support. They're having outages caused by aging infrastructure. Um, changes were taking too long. They wanted to fix their agility and also bring in some better uh, network security, although that was not as high a focus as agility and um, making sure that they're aging infrastructure was replaced. And in this case, we deployed, designed and deployed Cisco ACI because they needed to replace the physical environment. So we brought in the Cisco 9000 switches. We were able to help them improve their agility by using ACI and the programmability of that. <clears throat> and so the way we approached this specific engagement was that we came in and did a one day or one one and a half day workshop at one of those innovation centers where we could see, touch, and feel and explore the requirements that then went into a, you know, a paid professional services engagement that did the high level design, moved into detailed design and build, and then we turned it over to the client, right? So the client continued to manage this. So it gave you an example where we manage it and where the client manages it. So we can design and build in, in all scenarios. <clears throat> so our managed services allow us to monitor and manage it, keep it running, and it doesn't matter whether SDN is running in a traditional environment or in a 
cloud environment in a hybrid scenario. We bring that management, monitoring, and reporting to bear to help you on your services uh, in, in your new deployment. It's a lot to take in. SDN is real. SDN, we have helped a number of clients, and, and I'm not talking about one, two, or three, um, but many clients in utilizing these technologies to improve their agility, to improve their ne network security posture, and to improve their efficiency. So in do doing that, they've been able to, um, in, their, in their own organizations, improve their agility, security, and efficiency, bringing better value to their own stakeholders. So I encourage you to take a look at how SDN can help you in building a more modern network infrastructure that then is tied into your overall IT infrastructures that then can help you enable IT as a service, utilizing hybrid cloud services and drive greater value to your organization. So with that, I'll turn it back to Kieran and we can do Q&A. Thank you, Steve. Um, thank you once again for this uh, very informative session. I think um, uh, it was very interesting to note, uh, apart from the agility analytics automation benefits, which typically all of us hear, um, it's, it's also interesting to learn that our clients can really enhance their network security through SDN approach. I, I'm sure uh, the participants have got a great insight in this. Before we get on to the Q&A section of this webinar, I will take a minute to share some more information to all the participants. Uh, we have uh, pasted two URLs in the invite which has come to you. Uh, if it is not there, you can just chat with the moderator. They will share the links. Uh, I request all the participants, participants to save the link and access the same post this webinar. The, First link gives you access to an IBM white paper on the webinar topic of today. Kindly download the same for your future reference. The second link takes you to a quick and free digital assessment tool. So this assessment tool is to help gauge your current network requirements, address key networking issues around network agility, security and cloud readiness, and can identify how opting for SDN can help your business. So it's a, it, it takes around five to 10 minutes to uh, go through that assessment. Uh, we encourage uh, all the participants to try it out. Um, on the same uh, tool page, you also have an option to request for a IBM consultation. Alternatively, you can drop an email ID on uh, the ID is there on this slide to request for a half a day SDN exploration workshop. Okay. So this is very, um, um, useful workshop which a lot of our customers in India have uh, appreciated it. Uh, most of our key success uh, uh, wins in SDN space is started with this workshop journey as well. Um, in this SDN exploration workshops, uh, some of the key benefits with the client will get is one of course, um, a greater awareness of SDN and SDE, software defined environment as a whole and the value it brings to the business. Um, we uh, will get an opportunity to capture the, uh, the vision, the business drivers and uh, challenges. Uh, you will get the IBM consultant, the SME, sharing IBM's point of view to address the challenges. Uh, most relevant SDN scenarios, use cases for your uh, requirements. Uh, recommendation on two or three approaches to be pursued for the top priority. Uh, which, which we decide during the workshop and uh, also the SDN readiness maturity assessment and approach to address gaps aligned with the, uh, the client's vision. So uh, it's, it's a quick exploration workshop, half a day session. Uh, it, it requires investment uh, both from IBM side as well as from your side, getting the key stakeholders together and agreeing, agreeing upon this thing. Uh, we strongly encourage you to reach out to us and we'll be glad to uh, share with you the next steps on how do we 
uh, know, get this workshop going for your scenario. There are some procedures involved uh, which we will explain uh, during our mail interaction.